again guys. In this video I'm going to be building this Revel Nashorn and as you can see it's in 170 second scale. I haven't built any 170 second scale armour before on the channel, or in fact before at all, so I'm interested to see how that will go. This particular boxing is a fairly recent release from Revel, but I believe that the tooling dates from 2005, so this is, uh, well it's over 15 years old now. We've got the fairly standard uh, Revel box here, and certainly looking at the pictures of the model from the side of the box, it looks like there's quite a lot of detail on the interior. So looking at the sprues, they're very much um, as you might expect in terms of the breakdown. Compared to 135th scale armour, there's not a lot of suspension work to be done here because it's moulded into the side pieces already, which is good to know. I wouldn't really fancy building up suspension at this scale. The tracks are Lincoln length. We can see here on the third sprue that this is the older style uh, Nash horn, characterised by that raised driver's compartment just on one side. I believe the later versions extended that across. The instructions are standard Revel instructions, black and white. No real difficulties here except for the system they use to uh, designate colours, where they use a little letter in a flag and then you have to go back to the front of the booklet to look up, for example, what colour is F. Considering this is a 172nd scale kit, there are uh, quite a few steps, 39 in total. Although I suppose we should consider that we do have effectively an interior with that fighting compartment there, and uh, a lot of time is spent putting details on the gun and so on. There are three marking options. The first two are the plain uh, Dunkelgelb. And the third one is the one from the box art, which is the Dunkelgeld base with quite heavy olive green uh, camouflage patterns. That's also the one with the heart decal on the side as well. Starting construction, the lower hull is composed of several separate pieces, but they go together very nicely, very squarely. And on something like this that won't be seen, I like to get them in place with a bit of glue and then basically just lather glue on the inside all over those joints to make them extra strong. As you can see, the uh, return rollers and the wheels are, of course, tiny. What I decided to do here was to just dry fit the wheels and then I glued the track links together and I glued those to the wheels and that would enable me to pull the entire wheel and track assembly off for separate painting and also of course give me easy access to the lower hull for painting and weathering. There was a bit of a gap as you can see here adding the uh, front plate and there was a similar thing at the back later on as well. A small amount of filler will take care of that. The floor has a nice metal uh, non-slip pattern moulded into it. Of course, the sides of this uh, vehicle at this scale are way too thick, but um, there's not much you can do about that unless you're going to replace them with photo etch. I'm certainly not going to uh, sand down the entire side to make it thinner. There are some ejector pin marks on these panels. Most of them are covered by future pieces, so it's worth looking forward in the instructions to see what will get covered up before you get the uh, sanding sticks out. The gun is a fairly complex set of pieces. They all go together perfectly well, you just sometimes have to wait for a previous piece to dry before you add the next one. I haven't shown adding these pieces, partly because they're so small my fingers get in the way, and partly because I don't have my macro lens at the moment. But I'm really happy with that level of detail there on the gun. The gun shield was slightly difficult to add, partly because the curve of course has to fit into the slot on the vehicle. It's supposed to attach to the gun with these four mounting points. I found it easier to do them one point at a time and use some super glue to attach them so that it would dry nice and quickly. Even then it was a bit of a, a bit of a pain, but I got there in the end. 
I made a small modification to the rear of the vehicle. I wanted to have one of the doors open, so I carefully cut it out, trying not to damage it because of course I still want to attach it. I just uh, want it in the open position. Onto the painting and I gave the entire model a coat of Tamiya spray primer. This is their grey rattle can. And then I applied some Tamiya XF1 flat black to the lower areas and to the recessed areas. And this serves as the shadow coat and it's particularly useful on things like the tracks and the wheels where if you miss any areas with the subsequent paint layers then uh, you're not seeing through to the bare plastic. I went for the AK Real Colors Dunkel Gelb. I really like these paints, they spray very well. Uh, they're easily comparable to Tamiya acrylics. I applied the Dunkel Gelb base coat so that you could see some of the um, pre-shading coming through. And once that was done, I masked off the interior of the vehicle because of course camouflage paint was only applied to the exterior. I decided that rather than going for the camouflage schemes in the instructions, I would go for my own scheme. I haven't filmed this airbrushing process, I'm, not, I'm still not really set up for filming airbrushing at the moment. But I used the AK Real Colors Red Brown and Olive Green to paint some thin stripes more or less um, directly across the vehicle. And that's not perfect, there are a couple of stripes which are a bit too thick, but I think it does reflect the uh, sort of imperfect field camouflage, so I'm, I'm fairly happy with that. I gave the whole kit a gloss coat of Tamiya TS13, which is their rattle can uh, gloss. In terms of the decor schemes, obviously my paint scheme doesn't match any of them. I'm not super fussed about things like that, so I just chose one of the decor schemes which I liked. They're all much for muchness, essentially it's got a German cross and a number on it. Maybe the colour of the number is different. Maybe the unit insignia is slightly different. So I just chose one which I liked. The tracks are painted in a mix of black and a sort of dull red colour to give a slightly tarnished appearance. Then afterwards I picked out the individual wheels using the Dunkel Gelb. The rubber on the wheels was brush painted using some uh, MIG Ammo acrylics. And the details on the vehicle such as the tools were also painted with MIG acrylics. And before I move on to the weathering, I'd like to say a big thank you to my Patreon supporters. These guys support the channel every month and it really does make a huge difference. It helps the channel keep going and your support is greatly appreciated, guys. Thank you so much. And if you're interested in joining the Patreon scheme, then you can see the links on the screen now. Moving on to the weathering, and I use this Engine Grease oil paint. This is one of the Abtai Lung paints. I thinned it down with odorless thinner to a wash consistency and then applied it as a pin wash to the recesses. The wash is actually a bit too thick there. There's some nice texture on the floor of the fighting compartment and I wanted to bring that out using the wash.
The two sets of running gear here are a good example of the difference. So the top one has had a wash applied and the bottom one hasn't yet. And you can see how that sort of fake shadow effect there on the top one really makes things pop compared to the other one. Here I'm applying Loose Ground, which is an enamel product by Ammo by MIG. It's slightly textured to make it thicker than a regular enamel paint. I'm applying it here around the suspension. And then I blended the edges with some odorless thinner. I also drew some of the top sections down towards the bottom to make sort of streaks and running mud and grime and so on. I still don't have my shipping with me so I don't have most of my uh, weathering products. So I'm just going for a fairly simple weathering process on this one. Normally I would use multiple colours for example here to enhance the effect. Once that first layer was dry I took some more of the loose ground, thinned it ever so slightly and then flicked it onto the model. I'm coming from below and in front to give the effect of mud splashing up. It's quite hard here to get those splashes in the right scale and I don't think I did a very good job of that. They're a bit too big for one seventy second scale. You can see the final effect here once it's dry. I then took some metallic paint from Tamiya XF56 to paint the teeth of the track as if they've been uh, polished through running through the wheels. I dry brushed that same paint onto the raised area of the tracks for that same reason, to make them look like they've been polished when they've been in contact with the ground. And finally, I didn't do any chipping on the vehicle, but I did dry brush a little bit of that XF56 metallic grey onto a few areas around the fighting compartment. The um, ammunition storage bins, for example, and the gun breech itself. And with that, my work was complete, so let's see the final model. Okay guys, that was my quick building, painting and weathering video of Revel's 172nd scale Nashorn. I hope you enjoyed the video. I quite enjoyed working at this scale. It's the first time I've done it for an armour model, like I said. I'd definitely be tempted to build another vehicle in this scale, especially if it was something that was perhaps unique and I couldn't find in 135th scale. I certainly noticed the uh, reduced amount of shelf space this took up when I uh, put it on my display shelves and that's a major consideration for me at the moment so I will be looking at some potential new kits in this scale in the future. In the meantime if you do have any suggestions for any particularly good 172nd scale armour kits do feel free to leave a comment below. And until next time happy modelling and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks guys.